My name is Scott Smith. I am a fly fisherman, a fly tire, a photographer, videographer, filmmaker, writer. I've been tying flies for probably 20 years now. Um, everything from uh, steelhead salmon, bass, muskie, um, pretty much everything in between. Um, uh, my favorite fish to fish for was hands down the carp. As you can see, I have the carp sticker right here. Um, hands down, my favorite fish to fish for anywhere. They're huge, they're everywhere. You find a pond, a ditch, a creek, a lake, and you pretty much find a carp. I just travel around all the time, you just carry a flyer out of my car. Get, you go somewhere to find a road trip or something, you see a pond or you see a river or something and you, there's carp in there. Um, they don't get the recognition they deserve, but uh, they eat, and the other part about it is hard because they eat Everything from leeches and insects all the way to seeds and berries and crayfish and sculpins. So they're the most challenging fish, which is the way I like it. And it's hard to tie flies for them because you have to tie so many different kinds of fly boxes and stuff and try to match the hatch, so to speak. But it's hard to match the hatch because it's one day they'll pick up a leech and then in the same swim, they'll pick up a leech and they'll pick up a nymph and then they'll pick up a crayfish and then a sculpin. So they're, you gotta be in the right spot at the right time to find out what they're eating on at that particular moment. I think you skip one fly because the carp, like I said, they eat so many different weird things. So probably by, to break it down by like season and then probably location. So maybe like springtime in say Lake Ontario, there are a lot of nymphs and midges and stuff like that that they eat. But if you fish a river, there's still flies and caddis flies and uh, leeches in there. So it's kind of, it's hard to pick one. And then summertime comes and then they eat like, um, thistle seeds and cottonwood seeds and mulberries and then July or August comes when they eat grasshoppers and um, you know like in Ontario summertime if I had to pick two flies it'd be a sculpin or a crayfish if I had to pick one for the creek it would be uh, some kind of small minnow or a hopper in the creek probably and then springtime will be probably insects dance flies caddis flies um, so I don't necessarily could pick a fly it may be a group of flies tip for the new fly tires. Um, try and pick a few basic patterns and learn how to tie those really well. The basic pattern say like a gold ribbed hair's ear nymph, it's probably the most popular fly around, but you don't have to tie it traditionally. You can use the same steps as it and use the new UV materials or synthetics the same way that it's been tied for the last 50, 60 years, but it puts your own twist on it. But if you can tie the basically foundation for that fly, will help you tie pretty much build you to tie any single fly. Um, and the, the old common favorite, uh, love or hate them, the uh, woolly bugger, which turns into an egg second leech, which turns into tying minnow flies. It's kind of the same idea as bigger flies, except for it, it's, you know, you tie it on a size two hook or you tie it down to the size 12. But you can take that fly and probably a hair's ear, if you learn how to tie those two properly, you can turn out other flies and then, you know, you take pattern A and then pattern B and then pattern C, but you don't like that, but you like this and you add rubber legs to it and you add this to it. So my best tip would be like experiment. There's so many new materials out there. There's UV stuff, there's synthetics, there's the UV glues now that are out there. There's, uh, you know, the old fashioned head cement, which works great, but there's UV is so much faster. They don't have to worry about epoxy anymore. It dries in 15 seconds. Uh, join a fly tying club, go to shows, meet people. Uh, believe it or not, YouTube is a good source. Um, I'm old school. I got kind of a bit of a YouTube collection plus a, a little bit of library for fly tying books, but the books are kind of going, but you can only learn so much by watching it on YouTube so many times. If you see it in a book, to kind of give a, a breakdown detail behind a, behind the scenes stuff that you don't get from a YouTube video. So I got a kind of a, not a big collection, but a pretty good collection of uh, fly tying for uh, carp and, and, and trout and kind of take the patterns from trout and then modify them to fit carp because they don't work on trout hooks because they're big fish, so you have to use like a 3X hook versus our saltwater hook. So experiment, pick a handful of patterns what you're after, get really good at tying a handful of half dozen patterns, and then after that you can branch off and go from there. You can learn the basic fundamentals of tying, and then it goes after that, and you tie big musky flies, and it kind of goes, and then you get, once you get in, you're in, you're hooked. My name is Scott Smith, and I'm a fly tire.